I'll ask the first speaker, Professor Adrian Mindel, to talk to us about HSV1 as an STI. Thank you, Adrian. I'm going to talk to you about uh, herpes uh, simplex type 1 as a sexually transmitted uh, infection. Uh, as all of you will know, both HSV1 and HSV2 can be uh, sexually uh, transmitted. And by the age of 25, almost 80% uh, of Australians are HSV1 uh, zero uh, positive. Uh, those data were derived, again, as many of you will know, from a national uh, prevalence survey which was conducted uh, a couple of years back. And uh, basically that survey showed that uh, uh, HSV1 uh, was uh, present in 75 0.7% uh, of the population uh, with a very narrow uh, confidence intervals. We also know from that study that uh, HSV1 was more common uh, in women, 80% uh, compared to about 71% in males, and this difference was statistically significant, and was also uh, more common in uh, indigenous Australians, where almost all of them uh, were found to be HSV1 zero positive. The age difference really didn't show a great variation, but we need to bear in mind that this particular study only looked at individuals uh, above the age uh, of 25, and the reason for that uh, was that the data were derived from uh, a national diabetes survey, and so you can see that the zero prevalence really is very high from that age uh, onwards. Um, and uh, very little difference uh, in, uh, with increasing age. However, there is a difference, which we've already talked about, in, in comparison between uh, men uh, and women. Now, one of the things which has become uh, apparent uh, is that uh, there have been increasing rates of uh, HSV-1 as a cause of genital uh, herpes uh, around uh, the world. And uh, we recently reported on some data uh, looking at uh, genital herpes in, in Western Sydney uh, over a prolonged period of time between 1997 uh, and uh, 2003. And what we found was that uh, over those years, um, uh, there, there was one year where we had missing data, uh, the uh, proportion of infections due to uh, genital herpes really had increased from the you know, 5, 6, 7 percent uh, up to 25, uh, 30 percent. And uh, the difference was particularly marked uh, in women uh, compared to men. This difference was uh, highly statistically significant. And the difference was particularly uh, obvious uh, in those under the age uh, of 25. Now, these uh, similar findings have been uh, reported uh, in other uh, Australian cities, including Melbourne, in several cities in the United Kingdom, uh, also in Europe, and also in the USA. So we've seen a really dramatic increase in the proportion uh, of HSV infections that are due to uh, HSV-1 from around the uh, developed world. Now, the dynamics of this are really what is interesting. What we don't know is what proportion of these infections are uh, acquired in childhood, what proportion of these infections are acquired non-sexually during adolescence, and what proportion of these are acquired uh, sexually uh, during uh, adolescence. Perhaps this represents what, what is happening. We know that uh, early on in life, uh, children acquire HSV-1 uh, from parents, uh, siblings, and so on, and perhaps by the age of, of five, maybe 25% of the population uh, are seropositive. We also know from many studies around the world that the proportion of individuals acquiring HSV-1 during childhood is very much dependent upon socioeconomic conditions, and where living conditions are poor, uh, the seroprevalence in young children is higher. 
So what we have here is a, a proportion of individuals who've acquired infection during childhood. This slowly increases until perhaps the age of, of uh, 15 or, or thereabouts, and from there onwards there's a rapid increase uh, up to what we know in Australia is uh, uh, 75%. This, this slide represents what I believe to be the situation uh, in uh, Australia. I'm sure it's different in some uh, other uh, countries. Now, if we go back to the data in relation to uh, HSV2 uh, as a sexually transmitted infection, and we look at seroprevalence and we look at risk factors for HSV2, we know from numerous studies that there are quite a number of sexual factors which are associated with the acquisition of HSV2. These include uh, getting uh, older, so from the age of uh, 15 onwards, uh, the seroprevalence increases. Uh, women, uh, there's a, a greater likelihood of being positive than men. A younger age at first uh, sex. Uh, a higher number of uh, sexual partners, a history of other sexually transmitted infections, uh, inconsistent use of condoms, uh, low socioeconomic status or, lim or limited education, uh, and uh, ethnic uh, origin. So quite a number of factors have been shown to be uh, associated, and clearly some of these, if not all of them, are related to sexual activity. What about HSV-1? Um, are there any similarities? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, we know it does increase uh, with age. We know it's more common in women uh, than uh, in, uh, in men. Uh, we know that it's associated with younger age of, of coitart from a number of studies, a uh, higher number of lifetime uh, sexual partners, and lower socioeconomic status um, and limited education. And these data are derived uh, from uh, studies by Francis Cowan in London, published in 2002, and some work from uh, Jin and, and Andrew Grulick and his colleagues, which were uh, presented uh, yesterday and have been published recently. Now, one of the things which we also recognize that certainly amongst men who have sex with men, there may be other factors which are uh, important in terms of uh, HSV-1 Zero prevalence. Uh, the number of male sexual partners appears to be important. Uh, the number of female sexual partners also appears to be important. And uh, prior infection with uh, hepatitis B may also be uh, a, a risk factor. There may be other, uh, other factors uh, uh, as well. Um, this is in relation to, to serial incidents. Younger age and insert of oral sex with ejaculation with casual partners may also uh, be uh, important uh, in this uh, regard in men who have sex with men. Um, and for those of you who want further uh, information, you should look at the, the, uh, the paper itself. So really, in, in summary, um, in all populations, uh, HSV-1 is commonly sexually transmitted in uh, adolescence uh, and young adulthood, as evidenced by the proportion of individuals with HSV-1 type genital infection being diagnosed in clinics. Um, it is an, uh, uh, accounted for an increasing proportion of genital herpes in, in, in recent years, and that proportion appears to be still uh, increasing. It is associated with younger age at uh, Coitark and multiple sexual partners and is associated with lower levels uh, of uh, education. In uh, men who have sex with men, we also know that, MM, MSM, uh, that HSV-1 is related to the lifetime number of male and female partners, interestingly, and recent acquisition is related uh, to younger age and insert of oral sex with ejaculation with casual partners. Now, bear in mind, some of these data are seroprevalence data. Uh, some of the data, particularly in relation to diagnosis uh, within clinics, are clinical data. So there's a mixture of information here, and that needs to be uh, borne in mind.